First of all, Kim, congratulations on a million dollars. One thing I have to say, and I don't know if you heard it, and I know the fans at home didn't get to see it, but Richard Hatch was in the audience tonight. And during a commercial break, right before the end of the reunion show, he yelled out to Jeff Probst that you are one of the best winners the game has ever seen. What does that make you feel like? That is being a huge fan of the game and having loved the first season, I watched that alongside everyone else and was fascinated, thought Richard was amazing. Uh, that's an unreal moment. It's like meeting Jeff Probst and sure. you know having him say great game at the end of the game. That goes right up there. That was a pretty cool moment in life. Did you hear him yell that from the crowd? You know, I didn't hear him yell it from the crowd. He came up to me afterwards and told me to my face, which was even more awesome. <laughs> okay, so what are you going to do with a million dollars? That's a ton of money. Okay, so I've been trying not to think about this because I didn't want to sit there and then look like, you know, hell froze over on stage. So I'm trying to prepare myself not to win, but... Lots of bills to pay right off the bat. Small businesses that I'm really excited to invest in and, you know, spruce up a little bit. And then have some fun. You know, maybe travel some. And just doing this experience makes me want to do other things, you know. I've, I have this little bucket list and Survivor was on it and I never really dreamt that I would get to go and do it. But now it makes me want to do things that I never thought I could do. Now something that a lot of fans were saying, are you alright? Yeah, <laughs> something great. that a lot of fans were saying is that it, it seemed like the players this season just had no idea what they were doing. Do you agree with that? You know, I think that's half true and half not true. I mean, when you really look at the cast, there's a decent amount of strategists right off the bat. I mean, I think my first day out there, I'm thinking Troy, Jonas, Colton. And then there's a group of people that are really clever people. I don't know how well they knew the game, but, uh, you know, I think Chelsea, Sabrina, Michael, Jay. There's a lot of clever people out there. And then there's a group of people out there that probably didn't ha know a ton about what they were doing. But... You know, I don't know. In general, it was very easy for me. I think I developed really good relationships with them. I'm not saying the game was easy, but I, I always kind of felt like things were going in my favor. And I, you know, I'm sure if you go back and one thing changes, or you do one thing differently, it all could end up different. So. so tell us a little bit about your relationship with Chelsea, because I thought for sure you were going to flip on her mm -hmm. and get her out of the game. Did you really consider it, or was that just creative editing? No, I think I had to consider taking Chelsea out, because I never wanted to get so stuck on something that I wasn't willing to see the big picture. I mean, that was my big thing. I wanted to step back, look at all the players, and decide what you know gave me the best shot at winning. And um, I adore Chelsea. That was a big heart decision moment for me. It was probably one of the first ones I made. But I really did get to this place where I thought that if I didn't win, she would win. Uh, and I did think that she had a shot at beating me, but I, I would have so much rather seen her win. And I kind of thought anybody would beat me. If they were going to be that mad, like, I felt like, you know, whoever I was going to take was probably going to beat me, so. So if you wouldn't have won those immunity challenge back to back to back, would you be voted out of that game? I don't know. I can't decide. I think that there's definitely a chance that, that those girls would have wisened up and voted me out. But I also think that winning those immunity challenges was so key for me and winning the respect of some of the, the male jurors. Like, I just think they can't ignore physical domination and so I always felt like that was going to be huge for like Jay and Mike and you know. With the exception of Troy. With the exception of Troy. Yeah and it didn't surprise me that Troy didn't vote for me. I assumed that from the very beginning. You know I think Troy was really really upset and really hurt and I understand that when you're in it it feels incredibly real and it is hard to remember that it's a game. Tell us about Kat because you guys were all very emotional when she talked at the final tribal council. What was going through your mind at that point? I mean it was so fun when Kat got up because I was expecting the opposite. You know, I was right. expecting I her to say, was. yeah, and so it was, it was really touching for me because I didn't expect it from her because of how the person that I met coming into the game and it was just this cool moment of like who she had become. I really do think she grew a ton and then being extended forgiveness in a moment like that where it was so paramount for me, it was just, it was awesome. So one question I do have to ask, and I've been asking several people this season, it seems like a lot of fans were frustrated that the players this season weren't making huge moves, and they called it boring. What's your response to that? Totally. I mean, I get that. I've watched seasons like that before. And I do think that one of the things that you don't see going on behind the scenes is I really don't think that they saw me as a threat for the most part. I mean, I think Sabrina mentions it, you know, every once in a while. And I think Chelsea kind of thought maybe I had a good shot. But I don't think a lot of the players saw me that way, you know, minus Troy. I think they thought I was kind of boring and kind of quiet and I was really happy to let them think that so now how did you get in such a position of power because it seemed like every move was that was made you were calling the shots even Tarzan called you boss lady <laughs> how did you get in such a powerful position I really I think how that happened is 
me creating an individual relationship with almost every one of those people. You know, I think you can tell the people where the way the, the votes went who I didn't have a relationship with. But most of the people up there, I think, really trusted me and felt a bond with me. And I was like a calming presence for them. And I think they thought I had their back and I was for them. And so I feel like that's probably why that went the way that did. Now, what was the biggest move you made in the game that got you to winning the million bucks, would you say? Is there one particular thing that you did? I don't know if there is one particular thing. I think the the pivotal point was taking Jonas out, and that you know, as soon as we merged, it had to be a guy, and it had to be a guy that Troy and Jay were tight with, because I think we knew there was some dissension with he and Mike. But once Jonas went, it was kind of a matter of time, and I knew it was going to be stressful and chaotic and hectic, and that things could change. But I feel like had Jonas stayed, he and Troy two days later, it might have been me that you know that next vote. So would you play the game again? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd play again. I'm glad I'm not leaving tomorrow, but uh, i definitely play again or say no to that. So. All right, well, it was very nice to meet you. Congratulations. Thanks.